All right, next we have a letter here from Brother T from Estonia. Okay, I'm going to read this letter. I'm going to leave out some of the detail type of stuff. But um, I think that this is going to be very encouraging to a lot of people, uh, young men and whatever else that are considering the MGTOW movement and whatever. So uh, I'm going to read this. Dear Brian, this is the 27th of March, 2020. Dear Brian, Brother T from Estonia here. I have some great news. First, I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your sermons and studies. May the Lord bless you and your family mightily, both in this life and in eternity with great rewards. I have learned so much from your sermons and continue to do so. Thanks for the recent sermon regarding the MGTOW movement, M-G-T-O-W, men going their own way. Men that are just saying there are no good women out there. You know, If you haven't seen the study, you can watch that. As I mentioned in one of my letters, I had thought about a life of singleness for myself. Regarding your sermon about the MGTOW movement, you are right on about it, and I agree with everything you said in that sermon. My desire for singleness was rooted in two reasons. One, a hardship to find a suitable and saved Christian wife. Estonian, Estonia is a very atheistic country. There's barely any saved people in here, so it was very hard to find some, anyone suitable locally let alone a King James Bible believer who is sound in doctrine. As I have wrote before, when I was lost and got saved, I tried talking about God with my girlfriend at the time and hoping for her to get saved so that we can get married. Didn't happen. So that one broke and all worked together for good. Knowing that it is so hard to find a good Christian wife here, I gave up. I admit of my fault in it. I guess I should have continued to keep looking. Anyway, after that, I did search for other Christians, at least for friendship, both male and female, to have fellowship with no luck. Encountered a few Estonian Christians, tried making friends, they kind of disappeared. One guy even blocked me since we were discussing eternal salvation, and he was a very clear work salvationist who believed in his own self-righteousness. Seeing that this is how local supposed Christians are, I stopped looking for them. It was, if it was hard to find even a Christian friend, then how could I hope for a good Christian wife? Second reason was one of the things that jabbed me in your sermon. And again, I admit to my fault and thank God for your sermon for straightening me out. Actually, things have improved already since a month ago or so, but your sermon definitely confirms what the Lord is trying to tell me and to strengthen me out in the things which I need to get better. I am ashamed to admit and ask forgiveness from the Lord that it could have been laziness. I am not a lazy man per se. I labor hard with my hands to do the thing which is good. I do my best to work on my own car and fix other things and so on, plus my outdoor life as well, going camping and fishing and such to try to live off the land. <clears throat> About the laziness part. It was probably caused due to getting used to lifelong loneliness and being alone all the time, so it kind of grew on me to just have... A life of work, home, Bible studies, going outdoors, and repeat. Plus having a lost hope of finding a good Christian wife. So then I just started thinking that I guess I'll just be alone then. But as I said in my previous letter, I am open to a married life if that's what the Lord wants and if it brings more glory to Him. Let's get to the good news now, shall we? Well, God put me into my place with yet another thing. I cannot thank God and your sermons enough for teaching me so much. I got straightened out on the privacy issue that you made a sermon about, and now this too. Remember how I wrote to you that I was 99.9% .9 sure that I am the only viewer of your ministry in this country? Well, an amazing thing has happened. I think there's even more great things coming in the future. I told you that there was a girl who commented under your privacy video where you referred to having a letter from Estonia trying to get contact with me and being just as surprised as me that there is another King James Bible believer in Estonia who follows your ministry. Well, the great news is that I think it's another clear sign from God of him planning a married life for me. We have met several times now and have had great fellowship together. We are both saved King James Bible believing Christians, believe sound doctrine and follow your ministry. She is a modest girl wearing skirts and dresses. And those coincidences, in quotations, uh, just keep coming. We even share similar background. We both have Estonian first names and Russian last names, since we both have Russian background, or roots, so to speak. We are both appropriate age too, me being 26 and her 20. So basically, to me personally, a miracle happened. All this time I was without hope, thinking that I'll just have to accept singleness, 
that there is no way that there's anybody suitable for me who is attractive to me. Um, similar age, similar background, same sound doctrine, same perfect Bible, and so on. And then God surprised me with such a big thing. Thank God that this happened, both for our benefit and also so that God can put me in my place to help me trust Him more. Knowing what amazing things He can give us, unbelievable coincidences. <laughs> you don't understand that if you're not getting it. Coincidence is not in the Bible. Hmm. Think about there. When I had lost hope for finding a good, good wife, we both have strong feelings towards each other, and she likes me just as much as I like her. I'm glad it happened in such a quote-unquote coincidental and unexpected way, but not by me looking for someone. That way my flesh cannot get glory in his presence, but I can have yet another account in my life to give, thank, to give God thanks for by bringing us together. I really hope she is the right one for me. I could say so much more about it, but I will try to keep this letter short. Her parents are lost and lovers of money. Before I met her, she already had problems with her family, them trying to control her and influence her to focus on money. So many do it. Apparently, her parents were rich at some point in time, so that ruined them, I guess. Love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah, um, we can get into more of that too, but First Timothy chapter 6 is a good chapter to kick the whole thing of loving money. Anyway, her parents haven't been very loving towards her, and she has told me how she did not miss them at all when she was on a trip somewhere. But her being under their care, she was not able to leave since nobody would have provided to her, so she was stuck with her parents and tried to live in peace with them. A lot of young women in that in that very situation. So there's again, that's why I want to read these letters, because it, it's it's nice, you know, to show that yes, there are real people who are affected by this ministry, but it's also an encouragement to you. The same afflictions that are in the world are accomplished in your brethren. There are some of you that are going through this. Some young guys that are not sure if there's a woman out there that's saved and that could be a wife for you. Um, this is encouragement. You young women out there that are stuck at your parents' house and your parents are trying to push you out into the career world and you're saying, no, I want to get married, there's hope. But let me continue. After we met, her parents did not like the idea of her possibly getting married to me. Apparently, she could do better with someone who is wealthy or some millionaire or something. Plus, they started to prohibit her reading the Bible, saying to not focus on the Bible so much and to be more worldly. Then that was the last straw. She moved out of her parents' place and got a place of her own. At the moment, she lives in another city. The thing is, I am now providing for her. We are not yet married, but hopefully one day. So we are not able to live together yet. But I pay her rent and other necessary things since I live a debt-free life and am, able, and am able to do so, praise God. I joyfully provide for, for her out of charity and love so that she doesn't have to struggle alone and that me being her provider brings us even closer together, hopefully to a marriage one day so that we can live together too. Thankfully, I am debt-free and have a place to live where she is very welcome. Of course, it goes without saying that we keep everything pure and do not fornicate but wait on the Lord and live separately in the meanwhile. We try to meet once a week since she lives <clears throat> 100 kilometers away, around 60 plus miles. But so far, the Lord has provided the means for that too. There's more that was going on with her parents, them trying to spy on her, locate her phone since they own her phone number under their contact and so on. She now switched her number, so it's okay, and so on. Basically, her parents are crazy, but she's okay. I'm taking care of for her now. Hopefully God will not cut off my income. I'd like to keep providing for both her and, if possible, to keep donate, donating to you as well, brother. Take care of her first. Don't worry about the donations. Anyway, long story short, through your sermons, along with learning a lot, being sanctified and straightened out in many things, I also met an amazing girl who's very suitable for me. God is good. I often feel bad about how God gives me so much with me doing so little. I will improve too, and God is working on me a lot. I agree with everything you said in that study regarding MGTOW, and I'd prefer to have that life of being a good husband to take care of his wife and to provide for to her instead of just being on my own. I rejoice more of my sacrifices and providing and challenging challenges that build character instead of being in some safe bubble alone. Praise the Lord and thank you for your sermons, Brian. I cannot express enough how much they have helped. I'm glad God has led me to your ministry. I don't know where I would be if not for that through God's help and guidance. Probably wouldn't get very far, since there are not many King James Bible preachers who preach sound doctrine and harsh things that are necessary to preach. 
so that it would strike into the hearts of the listeners to convict them of their sin. One more time, I thank you for your work. I am now a provider for that girl and hope that God will lead it into marriage one day. I'll write you from time to time if I have some news again. If possible, please let me know somehow that you got my letter. As regards, T. So, <clears throat> just a, a real um, an important letter for me to read. Because, uh, like I said, there's a lot of you out there that just, you know, time of Jacob's, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's our hope. Our blessed hope that we get to go to be with Jesus Christ. Sure. But uh, a lot of people give up on living. And you just think, it's going to be the spring. And you wait and you just, I don't want to do anything. It's going to be the spring. No, uh, it didn't happen. Okay. Uh, maybe we can look at the blood moons and see how the blood moons are lining up. And <gasps> I think we could predict... And you get into this thing and you just get into this cycle. And I did it. Again, I'm an older man. I've been through a lot of really dumb mistakes. <laughs> so when I kick certain movements, I understand that a lot of times what's behind me kicking a movement is because I myself went through that movement and made those dumb mistakes. And I'm trying to help you to avoid them. All right. I wasn't married until I was 36. So again, oh, you don't know what you're talking about with the MGTOW thing. Uh, hmm. Uh, yes, I do. So, young people, um, your desire should be to please the Lord in all things. And a married couple, uh, I mean, unless you're, you, you know, you're going to stay single and you're going to serve the Lord on the level Paul did, where you're going out there and you're you're risking your life and you're probably going to going to end up getting killed. Well, okay, maybe stay single. But uh, if you have struggles with the flesh, with lust and things, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. And um, that isn't the only reason for marriage. Uh, sometimes you need that structure in your life. Sometimes you need to be able to have a wife there and say, you know what, I need to be a man here and, and uh, get rid of the video games. I need to be a man and, and uh, stop with the rock music, stop with this, stop with that. I got a wife to provide for now. Okay, so thank you very much for your letter. And we're going to go on to the next one.